Well, welcome to Planet Shakers, friends. Uh, today, I have one of our great friends at Planet Shakers, uh, Pastor Semi Rodriguez. He's a, a brother from another mother. He uh, is a person who is an author. He's an amazing communicator. He has global impact like few do. Uh, in fact, advised several presidents and has an impact that is uh, touching the world right now. And uh, we have the opportunity of him being a, a friend of our us here at Planet Shakers. So welcome, Sammy, to Planet Shakers. Pastor Russell, I am blessed and honored to be with you. I am like beyond a friend. I am like the president of the global Planet Shakers fan club. And <laughs> that's not like all joking aside. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I love Planet Shakers. Uh, that's That's... That is true. He's always telling me we need to do a documentary about this. We need to do a a, a, a Netflix series, and you're also a, yes. Uh, you're not just an author. You're not just a. Tell me all the things that you've got your busy yeah. life doing. So, what does God permit me to be? What has He assigned me to be right now? A number of things. I'm a. I'm a of course, I'm a Christian. I'm a husband. I'm a father. Uh, believe it or not, I have grandkids. So I'm a, and I am a, I'm a granddaddy, believe it or not. Wow. Um, I'm a movie producer. I've produced three films and signing up for two more films. Wow. One of them is Breakthrough, that 20th Century Fox that became a global hit, uh, working on a couple of other films. They're all on hiatus right now because of COVID. Uh, but I'm a movie producer. I'm a writer. Um, I am a presidential advisor by the grace of God, three presidents in a row. Wow. Um, we, they consider me to be, a, uh, the term that I believe in one of the major periodicals here, a global civil rights leader, whatever that means. I just fight for righteousness and justice. Yeah. Psalm 89, 14. I'm a Trekkie. So I'm a diehard <laughs> Trekkie. Wow. Um, yep. Yeah, and that's, and I'm a fourth generation New York Yankees baseball fan. Wow. Yeah. Cause we did a Insta live and I had a New York hat on and that, that actually took it to a whole nother level. you you felt Indeed, the anointing, the anointing on that was <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> the, the breakthrough movie. What do, what's the turnover? Um, are they saying from box office or what's because it's pretty big, right? Yeah, it's pretty it's it's pretty big for a faith film. So yeah. the the profit margin would be somewhere in the fifty sixty million dollar range profit. Wow! It cost us about fourteen million to make. Wow! So it was a fourteen million dollar film and. Uh, not counting Blu-rays, DVDs, and the, the Walmarts for the Costco, Sam's Club, Target sales. We're about somewhere about 60 uh, right now, 60-something. Right. So, and it, and it, that's, again, without certain sales. Yeah. So it's, it's a, for the movie industry, that's pretty amazing. That is that amazing. You can make a film for, for $14 million and generate, you know, be at 60, 70, $80 million. That, that's, that's a win for the movie industry. So praise be God. Yeah. Yeah, and no, and totally. for it being a faith film, I, I watched it um, from Melbourne to Singapore. It, it didn't go for six hours, but in that flight, and it was a great movie. <laughs> um, and so I, I almost like said to the hostess, uh, my friend made this movie, but um, I, I was uh, not, she wasn't talking to me, so I didn't do that. Um, <laughs> so you constantly make statements to me because uh, it's a call of God on your life. Um, vertical and horizontal. Um, explain mm -hmm. that. Uh, there's a there's a statement about Martin Luther King and um, yeah. what you feel you're called to do. Yeah, when when I was 14 years of age, I had an epiphany about Billy Graham and Dr. King. Now, I, I because of my lack of maturity, I was unable to contextualize that and and put some wording around that till later on, till I was in my 20s. But it was a revelation that God gave me. Because I saw in global evangelicalism, and primarily America, but global evangelicalism for that matter, the church divided into two camps, the Protestant church, the followers of Billy Graham, which I call the vertical, those that are committed to Christ being the only way, which I am, John 14, 6, committed to a message of righteousness, salvation through Christ, of course. And then the, the, the other part of the church was the horizontal church, the church committed to justice, what I call the Martin Luther King Jr. Church. And all of a sudden, here's what the Spirit of God told Samuel Rodriguez. Your assignment is to reconcile Billy Graham's message with Dr. King's march. Wow. Your assignment is to reconcile the vertical and the horizontal. 
And the Lord told me, Samuel, the strongest part of the cross is not the extremes. It's the center where the vertical and the horizontal intersect. That's where righteousness meets justice. Truth meets love. The fishes and the bread. That's where you change the world. So I stood committed from that moment on to reconciling Billy Graham's message with Dr. King's march. So instead of being either or, are you a vertical person? Are you a justice person? I'm a, I'm a righteousness and justice, truth and love, which is Psalm 89, 14, by the way. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Truth and love lead the way as attendants. That's my message. That's Samuel Rodriguez's assignment on this planet to reconcile righteousness and justice, truth and love. We have to stop creating a dichotomy. We have to stop pl- splitting them apart. We have to be both holiness and humility, conviction and compassion. We have to be both an orthodoxy and orthopraxy. So it's both John 3.16 and Matthew 25. It's lifting up your hands in worship and stretching out your hands with compassion to your fellow man. That's the full gospel. And that's the gospel that I preach around the world. And that's what's needed right now more than ever before. You you see so many issues. I've never been in a time where I've seen the onslaught um, on things, you know, this virus, uh, the economy, um, division, all, all these type of things that is on the planet Earth. And, you know, you, we can have lots of discussions around things, but really it comes back to the centrality of the cross. What you're saying is righteousness and justice. Um, how would Absolutely. You, how would you explain? It, it is righteousness. Yeah. It, it, and, and we are living, Pastor Russell, in, in my concern is when the church drinks the Kool-Aid and we deviate from the centrality of Christ. Yeah. It's, it's when we start bowing down to ideologies, constructs, worldviews that are culturally driven and created rather than kingdom driven and created. Yeah. Kingdom trumps culture. Yeah. King, kingdom should define culture meaning the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come, that kingdom. And right now, Pastor Russell, my great angst is that the church is following culture. Culture says right now, do this. And I see church and pastors doing this. Culture says, go like this. And the church is going like this. Culture says, repeat the following five words. You know, do-do-do-do-do. And church is going, do, 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 do. we are not created. We, have, we were not formed from the upper room through the cross and the empty tomb for the purpose of being the tail. Yeah. We are the head. Yeah. We should be defining culture. We should be shaping, influencing, reforming culture, not bowing down to it. Yeah. And right now, if we would go back to the center of the cross, then we have the moral authority to look at the spirit of Pharaoh and say, let my people go so they may worship. We can look at Nebuchadnezzar and say, we will not bow to anyone but Jesus. And then we can look at Herod, just like Jesus, send him a message and tell Herod, go tell that fox that I will continue to cast out demons and heal the sick because on the third day, everything changes. Yeah, wow. That's that's so amazing. I love that. You live your message. This hasn't been a, uh, there's a lot of people who get on uh, trends. You're not a trend uh, person. You understand the times. Daniel understood Babylon. Uh, Babylon. He spoke Babylonian, but he prophesied yep. into Babylon. He actually gave the yep. answer to Babylon, not just became a Babylonian. And I think we're living in times where the church, the challenge in the church is we we don't want to be Babylon. We want to understand Babylon. We want to understand the culture, but prophesy and bring an excellence of kingdom that shifts everything. We need to be a counterculture narrative. Christianity always emerges initially as a counterculture narrative from day one. The next step is after you're a counterculture narrative and people look your way because we are provocative. We are. That's what the Christian message was so pro- was so counterintuitive to the Roman Empire's ethos that it prompted Rome to look towards Christians, persecute them initially. But then after being a counterculture narrative, we have to engage the culture. And after we engage the culture, we reform the culture. 
That's the evolutionary process right there. That's the evolution of cultural reformation from a Christian worldview. Countercultural narrative. We don't smell like, talk like, walk like the world. Yeah. Then the world looks at us and then we stretch out our hands and we engage the world. Yeah. And after we engage the world, we change the world. Yeah. There it is. That's the that, gospel that's message. Wh- that's why you're doing movies. That's um, yeah. why uh, you know you're on CNN. You're on Fox. You're a, there's a really cool story that I I can't remember all the details. That there was a prophecy or something said that by the time you're 40, you'd be on CNN. Yeah. Um, th- could you tell yeah, us? This is true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I was 30 years old at a church, an Assembly of God church in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. That's a steel town in Bethlehem, where I'm originally from. Uh, this, I can tell you the name of the person who came in. He went in there and he prophesied and he said, Samuel, and already by that, that time, God was already shifting some things uh, nationally and, and globally for me. But then the, the word was so poignant and it's recorded. It said, Samuel, by the age of 40, the following things are going to happen. One of them was featured on CNN profile. So 10 years passed. I was already an advisor to George W. Bush um, you know, God had given us by his, for, by his glory and for his namesake, great national influence and so forth. But, but the only thing, my wife and I, it's September, I'm about to turn 40, I'm 39 years old. And I look at my wife and she says, let's go over the list of everything the Lord spoke to you about. And let's look at how many things came to pass. And we did, except there was one thing outstanding, CNN. So we're, we're in bed and, and we're going, and, she's, and, I, and I looked at her and she said, well, honey, the Lord said by the age of 40, you're going to turn 40 in a couple of weeks. CNN never profiled you. And I went, maybe the Lord meant CBN. <laughs> and, and, and the prophet missed it by a letter because they're good people, <laughs> but sometimes they miss it. <laughs> so, and I really did say, maybe it was CBN. And we've been featured on CBN like umpteen times. She went, no, the Lord was specific, CNN. So we prayed, held hands. Lord, thank you for these past 40 years. Lord, there's a CNN outstanding out there. Whip or without it, you're awesome. We're going to continue to press forward. But you did say by the age of 40, and everything you have promised has come to pass. Well, we have two weeks to my 40th birthday. Do your thing. Amen. On Thursday morning, and we have the email to prove it, on Thursday morning, just a few days later, we receive an email from CNN. Reverend Rodriguez, we're doing a special called Latinos in America, and we have identified you as the most influential Latino faith leader in the country. We are pressed for time, so we need to send a camera crew immediately your way (laughs) so we can shadow you and profile you. And that's how we were featured on CNN. Wow. Wow. I I was actually watching, um, uh, it was the coming, is a new year celebration um, coming into the new year. And you were one of the people that was, there was this sort of fun sort of show uh, I think that was last year, 2019, yeah. 2020. So I turn on, you know, because we have American cable TV here and I, I'll turn on and I'll say, Sammy's on Fox and then I'll see you on CNN. And, and you know, you live in places that you're meeting world leaders and um, you're meeting people of influence and you're, meet, you're, you're in the conversation um, with presidents. Um, how... How do you approach that? How how do you deal with that? Because, you know, some people might be so nervous that they're like, what do I say? Or other people, I'm the man. This is what God says. How do you, yeah. how do you deal with that? So I learned throughout the years, it, it was the initial sort of parameters that God placed in my spirit. And, and forgive me for sounding so prophetic and mystical. It's not mystical, but it's just what the Lord ordained in my life. Yeah. It is what it is. And forgive me for apologizing. I take back the apology. Um, Here it is. Samuel, when you walk into a room, don't say anything unless I ordain you and tell you to say it. That's one. Number two, speak last. Never speak first. Wait till you're called upon. Don't be presumptuous. So I go to meetings in the White House to this day. and 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 when they say, when they ask, are there any questions? I let everyone ask questions. And nine out of 10, I won't ask anything, but the president or whoever that person may be, secretary, cabinet, whoever it may be, will say, Samuel, we haven't heard from you. We need to hear from you. It just happened in the White House a few months ago. Everyone else spoke. I said nothing. 
the entire meeting that lasted about an hour. And then they called upon me. Here's the president, Samuel, we must hear from you. And I, I, it is not just being, it's not, you know, full humility or super humility. It's because I do believe if God wants me to say something, he will open up the door yeah. and his spirit is so powerful. He'll, he'll make sure that I share what he has placed in my heart to share. So that's one of the, and, and the second thing is knowing that God opens doors and God closes doors. So I have to walk in there living a holy, healed, healthy, happy, humble, hungry, honoring life. If I go in there with Sam's agenda, the same God who opened that door for me is the same God who can easily shut it. Yeah. So it can't be about me. It can't be about my agenda, not even my opinion. Yeah. I just want to go in there and prophesy and say, here's what the Lord is telling me. I don't use these words. Here's what the Lord is telling me. Yeah. But I share what the spirit of God is telling me. Yeah. But it's cool, Pastor Russell. W- one of my moments of Zen was walking in the White House, praying in the spirit by myself. Yeah. Just right there in the corridor and just praying in the spirit by myself and going like, how cool is this? <laughs> I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm in the White House. I'm about to meet the president and the anointing of God is all over me. Right. This is cool. If there's ever a definition of cool is when the Holy Spirit just hugs you yeah. And tells you, I got you. Yeah. How, in a world that's so divided, now obviously the NC, I always get this wrong, the NCL, NC, what is it? NHCLC. The, NCLC. <laughs> NHCLC. NHCLC, which you're the president of, which represents how many churches? In America, 40, I think it's 45,000 now, 45,000 churches in America now. And, and and around the world, we have a bunch of other churches that are made out. It's probably larger than that number. The re- the reason I say the forty five thousand are certified by Matt Staver, who yeah. is a very prominent attorney in the U.S. fights Supreme Court challenges for religious liberty. The other number around the world is a little bit more ambiguous because some of the nations have difficulties in submitting records yeah. and so forth because of the bureaucracies and government. But it's forty five thousand in America. So how many people? Um, conservatively, and then how many people went, yep. uh, outside it's of It's about that? 16 to 20 million, 16 yeah, wow. to 20 million. And the reason we, there's, there's a 4 million range is because many are undocumented. Yeah, wow. We live in a Western culture. You know, Australia isn't as far as this as America, but it's a very partisan world. So, you know, I'm, I'm for Republican and I'm for Democrat or I'm for Labor or Liberal here in Australia. Um, how do you, because you've served President Obama, you've served President, you're serving President o Trump, uh, Trump and President Bush. How do you? People will be trying to pull you and say, "Well, oh, you're this," or try to pull you. And how do you uh, cope with that? How do you deal with that? I wrote a book on it called "The Lamb's Agenda." I'm not married to the donkey or the elephant, which are the two corresponding mascots for the political parties in America. The donkey represents the Democrats, the elephant, the Republicans. I kid you not, Google this, I'm not making this up. And so I wrote a book and I said, I will not be controlled by the donkey or the elephant. The only one that will control me is the lamb who is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So I am committed to the lamb's agenda. So you get a phone call, an invitation, an email from this group that you may never have heard of in Australia says, hey, would you come and minister at the conference called Planet Shakers? It's in Melbourne. You you know, every you know, you've been with Phil Pringle, you've been with other people and you got this email um, and you kindly said yes to it. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then you turned up to Planet Shakers. What was your response when you turned up? Yeah, first of all, the entire world has heard of Planet Shakers. So let me be clear, (laughs) never heard of, sure. (laughs) Planet Shakers, one of the most iconic transformative ministries on the planet today, period. I would argue it is the most anointed ministry on the planet as it pertains to shifting the atmosphere. And I know this is recorded and others will see it from other ministries. And I think, you know, in, in full disclosure, they would even agree. They're, and I love the other ministries. Everyone has an assignment. Everyone has an anointing. Yeah. Planet Shakers is the most powerful atmosphere shifting ministry on planet Earth. I have never encountered a ministry like Planet Shakers. Prior to speaking for Planet Shakers, we would sing Planet Shakers songs. 
Uh, the Planet Shakers DNA was part of our ethos as it pertains to praise and worship in the environment. Yeah. So Sam Rodriguez was already Planet Shakers. So if, I, if, if you cut me, I believe Planet Shakers yeah. prior to Pastor Russell Evans inviting Sam. Yeah. So when I received the invitation, I knew it was God ordained because I'm lining up with a ministry that looks like me, sounds like me, walks like me, talks like me. There are ministries that you have to accommodate to where you basically, and I, and we do it for, with due deference, you accommodate and you modify your presentation because yeah. you want to line up with the, respectfully with the wine skin of that ministry. And that's good. Yeah. We need to do that across the board. We need to be agile to do that. But with Planet Shakers, Sam Rodriguez, zero modification. <laughs> it's, it's Sam, meaning yeah. it's the way God made me as it pertains to my freedom and uh, my vociferous expression of the gospel, uh, my energy and my passion. So Planet Shakers, you could tell I'm enamored with Planet Shakers. <laughs> I love Planet Shakers. I don't like Planet Shakers. I absolutely adore Planet Shakers. And I do think Planet Shakers may, may very well be. I prophesied this to Planet Shakers. Planet Shakers is the reason why nations that are not primarily Christian will shift to Christianity in the next upcoming season. It really is. And even in other majority religious nations, not in Christian, y'all get what I'm saying here. Yeah. These nations will experience the glory of Jesus because of the anointing on Planet Shakers. So I'm honored, not just to speak for Planet Shakers, but to be part of Planet Shakers. Yeah, yeah that's true. It is, because you'd seen a lot of other conferences, even though sure. you, you knew the music, you knew that, um, the, uh, what, you walk in, you go, this is me. Um, if somebody was walking into a Planet Shakers conference or whatever, how would you describe it to people? Well, l l let me tell you my first experience. I walked into this arena, this jam-packed standing room only, 16,000 plus. The sound decibel level, the decibel <laughs> level, that's outrageous. And I, and I don't mean like it, it's weird, awkward, and annoying. You, you walk in there and you sense the glory of God. You, you sense it, whether you're on the Baptist side of, of, the, of the spectrum, or either you're charismatic or automatic, whatever you are, <laughs> you're going to sense the spirit of God. Yeah. And it was powerful. The freedom of worship, it wasn't coerced. It, was, it wasn't pushed. It was just wild. And then you make the assumption, Pastor Russell, here was my assumption because my first time there, this is years back. My assumption was, all right, when we get to the preaching, it's a different animal. The audiences usually will calm down. They get a latte, you know, laid back, yeah. not interactive, no responding call. During the sermon, they are argue as, arguably as more animated than during the praise and worship set. <laughs> Every single thing that resonates from scripture, yeah. the place would erupt. And it wasn't just like, oh, that's cute. It was that word is from heaven. It just changed my life. And I'm going to respond. Here's my 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, yes and amen. Ready? Amen. Yeah. It's wild. It is the most responsive crowd that I have ever preached to in all of my years of ministry ever. The Planet Shakers audience. Because it's, people, it's young men and women, and men and women for that matter, who are hungry for the presence of God. They remove the lid and it's God uncensored. Planet Shakers equals God uncensored. No lid, no limit. Wow, wow. Well, we, you know, I remember it, 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 the Bible talks about Mary and Elizabeth and when they met, their wombs leapt. And uh, I think there's some people that over the years you just connect with, hence friends of Planet Shakers or family of Planet Shakers, that you meet them and your wombs leap and you go, oh, oh my goodness, uh, I hadn't met this person, but they carry the same heart and the same spirit um, to uh, what we feel on our, our lives. I'm and smirking because Pastor Russell could tell the audience here. We could, because so Pastor Sam, Sammy said, so we had, I would preach for Winterfest in the States. And it, that's like the largest youth gathering in the US, right? It's ginormous. And and I preached multiple years. And guess who, the, like the band and the worship team? It was Planet Shakers. It was prior to me speaking for Planet Shakers. Yeah. So S Sam Evans, 
inevitably, long story short, I end up in Australia. And like, for whatever reason, it hit me. And when it hit me, I, I went down, I apologized. It's been a year, it's been like six years of apology tour now, <laughs> but I continue to apologize. And then, so Pastor Russell and his amazing wife, they each carry an anointing and together they have an anointing, right? And Pastor Russell, I preach with him, and anywhere I go where I hear him speak, the atmosphere shifts. It's the same anointing. And Planet Shakers comes from his heart, the anointing and the calling upon his life. His amazing wife comes in, and she preaches up a storm. She goes to San Diego, and I go, what in the world is this? Is there anyone in the Evans family that's not anointed? Is there anyone? Is the dog anointed? Is the cat anointed? I mean, what is it? it I mean, is a Starbucks cup anointed? So just... There's an anointing that's upon your family that can't be denied. That's why I want to do a Netflix, a Netflix series on it. I, and I'm not kidding about this. I want to do an episodic because it's pretty amazing from your parents, their trajectory, from your grandparents, the journey, all of that. It's just an amazing story that the world needs to hear. And the amazing thing is, Sam, my wife was speaking at one of your conferences in San Diego with uh, there and you, um, with Pastor Sergio and yourself and... Um, I was getting these text messages and one was from you and one was from Pastor Jason Lozano and <laughs> like, oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. And I'm just there smiling at because I actually think Sam is the secret source of Planet Shakers. What she carries is absolutely Sam, powerful. She's amazing. I'm a, I'm a Sam fan and her name is so anointed. <laughs> That's true. Uh, in um, <laughs> That is funny. What is the Holy Spirit? What do you feel? We're living in unprecedented times. I've never seen an onslaught uh, in humanity, really. You know, I turned the TV on the other day, Beirut, um, what's happening there. Yeah. Um, you know, the government resigned, the explosion, what's happening with the virus that is shutting down economies and it's just crazy. Um, then what's happening with uh racial tensions and uh, quali quality issues and um, all, all that. Um, what do you feel the Holy Spirit is wanting to do in this season on this earth? Job, in the Hebrew text, in the original language, the wording of the initial conversation, which is one of the most epic conversations in all of history, in all of humanity, in all of the universe, is the conversation between God and Satan regarding Job. But if you do your biblical due diligence through the Hebrew exegetical analysis of the passage in its original language, the Bible says that Satan was hovering, acquiring information. Yeah. The wording in the Hebrew is information. Mm -hmm. Satan was traveling around the world acquiring intel so he can use that intel against human beings. Yeah. Holy cow. That's how it prompted God to say, well, you're traveling around trying to get intel. Have you considered my servant Job? What does the devil know about what's to come or what does he sense that he's trying to avoid? COVID-19 comes from the pit of hell. That's why I refuse to say 2020 is the year of COVID. I am not going to label any year of my life exactly. with a descriptor that comes from something that emerges out of the pit of hell. Yeah. No, for me and my family, I'm calling it the year of overflow, the year of glory, the year, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Just don't call it the year of COVID. Yeah. And here we are. COVID, you, you alluded to the listing, racial strife, discord, political polarization, economic melees and chaos. You name it. Uh, infringement on God-given rights like religious liberty and so forth. Violence, murders, massacres, natural disasters. There are things happening right now. I am convinced and convicted that the enemy is privy to the fact that we are about to experience an awakening that will lead to a revival that will lead to cultural reformation. Let me list that. We're going to see an awakening that will make the Jesus movement look like the preamble of a book and Azusa look like the foreword. Mm -hmm. My point to you is we're about to experience a great new awakening, a global awakening that will lead to a revival. These two things are not synonymous. They are not. An awakening that will lead to a revival, that will lead to cultural reformation because sometimes 
the revival stays within the church and it never touches the culture. Yeah. But this time it's going to touch the culture. It's going to reform the culture. Pastor Russell, that's why you and I are alive. Mm -hmm. And be for such a time as this, yeah. we are quarantined. We're living in, in a very unprecedented cuckoo for Cocoa Puff year. But man, all we have to do is hold on. Mm -hmm. If we hold on, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Permit God to put things in order in my life, your life, our life, because order precedes overflow. Mm -hmm. Alignment precedes, goes before abundance and acceleration. Let God be God. Let's, let's let God build this new wine skin for the new wine that's coming. Because on the other side of this COVID-19 pandemic and everything else is going on, mm -hmm. we are about to see the next thing to fill the earth will not be COVID-19, 20, 21, or 22. It won't be a brand new political movement. The next thing to fill the earth will be the glory of the risen Christ. Yeah, amen. Yeah, it, it, it is um, unprecedented times, but we have an unprecedented God. I, I was reading in Ephesians Indeed. chapter one that he is immeasurable. He, you cannot even get close to him. He's high above every name. And I, I agree with you. I'm not naming this year the COVID-19 year. This year for us at Planet Shakers is a year of acceleration. And that it is amazing with acceleration that ex divine acceleration is not momentum. You know, people can build things on momentum. Churches can be built on momentum. Businesses can be built on momentum. Divine acceleration Sorry. is built when there's loss. When it seems like there's loss, there becomes divine acceleration. So you look at Ruth, she lost her husband, lost everything, ends up in Boaz's field and there is divine acceleration. You look at Joseph, he's in the prison, he's lost everything, he's prophesying still, kept in the right spirit. And in a moment, divine acceleration takes him from the prison to the palace. And if you, you look at Jesus and they lost, he's died, and in three days, there comes divine acceleration and the whole world has access to the throne room of grace. And so even though people have lost things in this season, if we stand firm and keep our ground and hold uh, our position in, in what the Bible says, it amazes, to, amazes me how many Christians actually don't know what the Bible says and uh, let fear and intimidation and manipulation um, control their lives. But if we understand what the Bible says and stand firm, then God takes from nothing. Like in our church at Planet Shakers, we were feeding uh, 200 people a week. We set up five centres. We were doing half a tonne of uh, food we're giving out a week before any of this happened. Now we're giving out 34 tonnes every wow. week. And um, someone said recently that we could be one of the largest food relief centres in Australia, if not the largest. Wow. So if the Bless church be the church and where there's a need provides the answer. So, yeah, I, I'm in agreement with you. I believe it's going to be the greatest revival we've ever seen, but it comes Amen. by... The 120 were a part of the revival um, that... They, they got in the right position for God to move. And I think the challenge with the church is, are we positioning ourselves for the move of God or are we positioning ourselves to become Babylon? And I think that's the tension that we live in in these days. I love it, I come in agreement. And I know that I know that I know that Planet Shakers is instrumental in this new awakening. Planet Shakers is one of the most catalytic anointed facilitative platforms by which the glory of God will shine upon the nations in this upcoming season. That's why I'm honored and blessed. One of my greatest blessings is to partner with, to serve, to come alongside you, your amazing wife, your entire ministry, because it's not just a speaking gig, man. The gigs, that gigs are yeah. gigs. Yeah. That's not that. It's way beyond that. We're gonna change the world together, my friend. I know that. We are. We are. And, you know, I love uh, every time I get with you, I feel energized. You carry this great faith and great hunger for God. And, and I just believe that um, what we're going to do together as friends and family um, in 20 years from now, we'll go, uh, hasn't the Lord been kind? 
And so I really want to thank Amen. you. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your belief. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for being with us today. And we look forward to seeing you in the flesh uh, very soon. We love you. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs>